us. Um, that was a little bit prior probably to um, when we just um, uh, contracted with the grief to be our in-house engineering services as needed. Um, but some of the additional money in there was for um, projects that would come up and we'd have to hire an engineering firm to um, do the survey and the design. So some of that would be used up um, um, with the, uh, the grave um, contract that we have. Um, any GIS fee increases to catch up with other projects would come out of there. And so I believe that's a number that we would need to hold to. Um, any other increases? Of course, wages um, for, for this coming year are uncertain what they'll be. Uh, we expect consulting engineering fees to come out of those wages um, until such time we can place people in the positions that are vacant. A little bit of a, under um, software support, um, we have a little bit of an increase in there. Um, we need to get one more uh, software package in, so minimal increase of $1,300. Capital items. Um, I had fifteen thousand dollars in there for capital items to replace old, outdated survey equipment. Um, that has to do with actually the uh, handheld units to do a collection of um, for the GIS data and in-house surveys. Um, as uh, the city or the village here would inspect their own projects, some of the equipment needs to just be updated with some components. Personnel sheet. Um, you can see we have uh, three open positions and three filled positions. So we're going to work this year and uh, try to fill those yet. It's going to be a questionable year on that. And capital items, um, we have one large item for computer software. Um, it's just there's, there's a software package we need to upgrade. Um, our current software package for the surveying equipment is, is outdated. It isn't um, um, backed up anymore. Um, it's, it's just old and outdated, so we need to replace some of that. The uh, Public Works campus design will be continuing. That's going to get rejuvenated here. Um, and then I had $10,000 in there for um, continuing to do some sidewalk programs where we we have some dead end sidewalks where we like to try to connect them. Last year we did Hilbert Lane at, um, um, I forget the name of the street. Sylvian. Sylvian. So that's what that is in there for. Any questions? I just want to flat budget. I just want to make sure I'm on the right page on this. So under capital items, you got forty thousand dollars for computer software, twenty. $23,400,000 oh. <laughs> for public works. Yes, I'm inflating the budget. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's a little too much. What's the right number to be in there? Uh, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I'd have to look that up. I didn't catch that. Okay. For the campus, is that? Yeah. That is, yeah. That, is, that is an estimated number for discussion. 23,000. No, 23 million. Is that 10 million to 23? Oh, no, that's for total construction and design. I didn't, I didn't put that one, I don't think I put that one in there. Steve did. All right. Then I might want to get Steve to chime in. Steve, is 23,400,000 the correct number for Public Works campus design? Where's Michelle? Yes. Sorry about that. I forgot to unmute myself. Um, the uh, the twenty three million that we included in this is, as Kim said, a, a placeholder at this point. Um, if you recall, the um, the last time uh, when we went through the, uh, the preliminary design process, uh, we came forward to the Public Works Committee with. Uh, a scale down alternative that was um, 15 approximately 15 million. Um, and uh, the Public Works Committee gave us some direction to go back and take another look and make sure that we were sizing the facility um, in such a way that uh, uh, it would serve the needs of the community not only now but, but into the future. So we began that whole, and the Public Works Committee also asked that we looked at. Um, 
completing our site preparation, now we could co-locate the, uh, the police department, uh, the new police building that's in the long-term capital plan at the same, in the same area. Um, we uh, did uh, uh, work with the consultant that we've been uh, using on that process. Uh, they had several meetings with the police department and, and, and unfortunately over the last few months we haven't been able to uh, get back to uh, getting better information on that number. Um, so it's, uh, my, my guess and, and my hope is that it would be less than, than $23 million. Um, Me too. Uh, but uh, but I, it also looks like it would be more than 15. Um, so my recommendation to the board is that, that you know, you, you leave a, a placeholder number in, whether that's 23 or, or 20 or 18, um, whatever you choose. Um, and then we'll continue forward with the design process and the real key decision point will be when we, when we issue bonds and, and approve contracts for that project. Okay, so this is 20... Hey, can you do me a favor and unmute the Emily laptop? Yes. WebEx did a new feature where I have to request to unmute, so I'm going to have to leave that one unmuted for the rest of the time. That's design and no, the other one, Deanna. The other. One. Oh, she can watch you. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> She's going to the wrong one. Nothing like Zoom. Steve. Steve, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Steve. It is construction, Terry. Steve. Steve, are you there? Yes. Yes, I am. Okay, Terry's got a question for you. Uh, Steve, is that is design and construction correct? Yes, because it's on here as design. No, That's why I think a lot of us oh, are like, go what's going on? It is construction as well. Okay, and, but it is for a public works building and a police building? Public no. works. Public works. What was the police thing? Well, to, to clarify that... Um, it's going to put it in the same we, site. When we submitted the preliminary... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, and when we submitted the uh, preliminary design... Uh, for review to the Public Works Committee, the question was asked whether it would make sense to co-locate the new police building that's in the long-term plan on the same site as the Public Works facility. So that was something we're looking at. That decision has not been made yet, but um, if that is the decision that we're made, um, we may need to go forward with site preparation. Uh, for the police building at the same time we're doing site preparation for the public works building and it may make sense and may help with the phasing of the, the project as well so there's a, there's a lot of information a lot of analysis that has to be done yet um, but the, the 23 million is not for the police building as well but it could include some of the related expenses if that's the direction the board decides to go okay so to me it sounds like we're co-mingling some stuff because I don't believe this board has talked about a new police station at this location. So if we're putting money towards analyzing a police station in this number, it may be high until we as a board discuss building a police station. Over there. So, but as a placeholder, I'm comfortable to have 23400000 as a placeholder. We don't know what's going on yet, so let's leave it in there. And again, it is borrowed money, and you would have another shot at it once you go to borrow. Well, I think there's a lot of shots at this, just like there was the the uh, pavilion in the Fireman's Park. But the other question I have, though, is Steve, in this number, does that include bringing the utilities to it, sewer and water? That, that does. And that's something that we could also look at um, water and sewer paying a portion of that or using special assessments. Oh. So there are some other options, but, but I would say that $23.4 million number would, would cover the, uh, the sewer and water extensions as well. Okay. Any other discussion on the $23 million number? Okay, is there anything else in the engineering budget that people want to talk about. Dave? 
Yes, Trustee Zabel. The only thing I want to point out, since we don't have manpower and we're hiring outside consultants, it may be advisable if we have money left over in this account this year to carry it over into next year to make sure we cover the cost until we do get the three bodies that we need to replace. Give me a section number to look at. Well, it's uh, just under uh, salary, uh, actually the one page where he has the three open slots and the three filled slots. Personnel. personnel. I got salaries, let me find personnel. I think if you look at the first page of expenditures, you have the omitted 2020 budget. Um, I'm on oh, this. On. 2020 projected total is 95822 and um, the budget was 146 thousand I think what trustee Zabel is saying if there's a difference in their savings from that was budgeted for 2020 roll that over into 2021 into 21 instead of putting it because we may need it to my understanding is the consultant has hired out at a hundred and eight dollars an hour uh, well it varies the highest is 114 but if we get lower level staff it could go down to 80 or 84. Ah, here we go so and the, right now the consultant is basically working on two days a week maybe filling in a little bit more here and there but at that rate to cover those slots we should have the money this year to cover it but going into next year depending on when and if we get the replacement you may need a little bit of extra money in that area is that a motion that we should earmark this money or is that just a discussion point it's a discussion point okay so we should all keep it in the back of our minds as we go forward right and, and finance and engineering and, and staff to so keep it in mind okay finance always comes up with all the good old money we get to carry over <laughs> finance a <laughs> finance are you keeping that in mind <laughs> he's laughing now okay see won't be here, so. all right anything else on engineering that anybody wants to bring up question discuss no no further comments then I will go on to item B which is building and grounds which tab are we gonna put I gotta find it first so Thank give you. me a minute building and grounds maintenance okay I'm ready all right hello uh, what 2021 buildings and grounds pretty straightforward hopefully this year uh, we didn't come with a lot of asks on the capital side um, kind of coming out of the COVID thing here and seeing how this goes so um, we did take an opportunity I did take an opportunity to increase some of our uh, expenditure line items um, and again a, a lot of that was done from you know historical data of going over in certain items over the last couple of years um, Let's see if we can highlight a couple of them. The fire department building, uh, 15, uh, well, actually the biggest one, the, the Bass Bell and Wolf went from 1500 to $10,000. That, of course, um, covers our new pavilion that's out there and so on and so forth. Um, fire department, again, aging building, uh, full-time staff there now, so there's, there's more needs for maintenance and so on and so forth there. Um, and then an increase in the library budget from thirty to forty thousand dollars. Kind of just looking at the trend of the of the past uh, few years, uh, we've been over over budget on that. So just trying to increase some of those line items a little bit. Uh, non borrowed capital. Uh, a lot of that is going to be um, carryover items from this year that we didn't do because of COVID. And just a few additional things like repairs of the clock tower and some uh, an entry door here, and then uh, mapping of the fire suppression system over at the uh, the library. Um, other than that, pretty much everything in that area is all carryover from 2020. And then finally, on the capital side, um, the only real capital item we have, borrowed capital, is going to be a uh, boiler replacement. Actually, two boiler replacements at the uh, at the library, and again, those are just nearing their service life, and they're nickeling and diming the village uh, maintenance-wise. And so, we're just going to take the opportunity to hopefully replace them and put that nickel and diming behind us. What kind of boiler are you purchasing for for thirty thousand dollars each if you're buying two? Uh, 
Well, um, there's rock and bar uh, boilers down there now. Again, that number is derived from our contractor that we work with. We just went and got a budgetary finger uh, figure. Um, I don't. We don't. We haven't selected anything yet. Of course, once we do that, we'll be presenting that to our committee and, and okay. go on to board. Strictly a budgetary number. Just strictly a budgetary number. Placeholder. Yep. <clears throat> Board, any questions? Trustee Meyer. Uh, in regards to the library, did you ever finish that, uh, the painters ever finished the uh, paintings uh, in the library? The painting? Yeah. Yes, that was done last year. That was a... Heat uh, registers? Uh, heat registers, no. That's being done. Um, the library board is paying for that out of some funding they have. And we've been trying to coordinate time-wise with them uh, one of the big concerns they have is not having things open during the heating season, and which makes that a summer project, which unfortunately for our department makes that a very difficult task to complete because we're outside working in the summer. Uh, so we've been working with Trish and Connie to just try to get that finished up. But yes, that's still hanging out there. I'm sorry? Would it be better to have somebody from the outside do it, contract services? We could definitely... We could, we could definitely have a look at that, yeah. Um, so they had a price from a contractor to paint um, their heat registers. Um, I wasn't in favor of that because paint on a heat register gets flaked off and pulled off real easy. Um, the project that we did put in place was to take them down and have them powder coated by armor coatings here in town. Um, so it's just a matter of us coordinating the time to take them down and then reinstall them. Um, again, I guess we could look, look at getting a number for having a contractor to come in and take care of that, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? <laughs> Trustee Kaminsky. Um, what do we anticipate under 5215 maintenance and repair for the um, uh, Bast Bell House? And I'm, I'm looking, it says this line item is for the maintenance of two buildings, but should that, the, the new building shouldn't really require any maintenance, should it, if it's brand new? It shouldn't, and that's a good point. Again, I guess I would just go with saying, um, you know, if you look, if you look at the previous years, you had 3,553. Of course, that 53 was some pretty major repairs uh, to some of the beams and so on and so forth. But we've got a lot of uh, rotting windows, rotting doors. Um, you've got two buildings you're trying to maintain. You've got furnaces, plumbing. Um, 1,500 just really isn't a lot of money to maintain those buildings together. Um, Again, they, they do cost the village a fair amount of money, but. Okay, oh, okay. Um, and do we decide, can we use uh, tourism dollars to help out with some of this stuff, seeing it's our tourist attraction? Um, no, no, because it's an existing building. It can only okay. be used for a new construction. Okay. And there's not much left in there anyways. Hotel, motel. This is there a reason that $41,000 is being carried over to rerun out of time to do these projects or this didn't get done? We're talking about the stuff from 2020? Yeah. We the line item didn't on. do it due to COVID. Kim, I don't know if you want to jump in there, but that was that was basically something that we were planning on, on doing this year. It wasn't that we ran out of time. We intentionally didn't do it just to make sure that the budget was in line. But... Yeah, the staff had gotten together with uh, Administrator Cricklow earlier when the COVID was coming through to see where we could save money, where we could not spend money if we, if we ran into problems later on in the year, knowing that our revenues may be lower. So those are some of the projects that were totally put off um, voluntarily by staff and, and uh, administration so that if it was available to do the next year, we'd carry it over with a little bit that Scott had added for inflationary for the following year, but those were planned uh, deferrals. And the numbers that I see here, uh, on the I'm on the capital items um, for this, and they got, got $1,000 of police department, but they got 5,000 being carried over. So that reality, you got six thousand dollars in the budget, or am I reading this wrong? There was five thousand dollars in 2020 that will be carried over to 2000. 
2021, the only thing we're adding new would be the extra $1,000, anticipating some costs would be higher okay. next year than they are this year. So the actual borrowed, the actual tax money. That, what's in the taxes this year? The yeah. money of the thousand dollars is for 2021. I think that's just basically reflecting the additional okay. cost so for 2021. We don't 2021. have six thousand in the budget. We have a thousand in the budget. In the 2021 budget, yes. Okay. And Kim, that was. I think that was you that entered those numbers, but I, I'm I'm on the same page with you. The five thousand rolls over, we now have enough money to do the project. Trustee Wing. I just have a comment. Um, on the buildings there in Dinesville, because of their age, I mean these are the oldest buildings in Germantown. There is rot and we're fixing it. But I noticed the one building has the like split timbers and one of the timbers must have been rotted and we replaced it with like a flat uh, cedar board and it doesn't match the rest of the building is there a way that we could somehow have a closer match because it's starting to look like we're patching it together yeah and that and that literally uh that literally was just a patch um okay. the stucco that was above that timber started to drop down and so that was literally just to keep that stucco in place. But yes, when the, when the time comes to make all those repairs, uh, we're going to work with with a subcontractor of the general that did some of the beam work. Uh, he lives right in town here, and, and he works on historic buildings all the time. He did the work there as a subcontractor. So we'll be reaching out to him and trying to get him involved in that. Yeah, that'll, that'll all match when it's done. All right, cool. Fingers crossed. Further questions, further comments? Anybody want to remove anything at this point? We got to save money on the budget. Okay. All right. I will right, we'll move on to item C, highway department, seeing no further discussion on buildings. Well, that's still me, isn't it? Okay. Um, first and foremost, um, you know, there's a lot of things going on, a lot of needs in the, in the village this year. Um, last year we did, uh, we were hoping to get two employees, uh, two operators and one mechanic. Um, the board graciously gave us the two employees when I think it got cut down to one. So thank you again for that. Um, we did put a mechanic in this year again, and I think due to some of the other needs around the village, we're not getting that, um, which is, which is fine. Um, and uh, I just want everybody to know, though, that we're going to continue to put that in until that, that need is met. The need is there. Uh, let's see. Some of the heavy hitters here on the nine items. Um, I, I think the biggest one, uh, we used to do all of our signs, markings, painting, um, and traffic signal work out of one budget. That budget gets strained each and every year. Uh, that budget is 35-40. And we spend as a village about forty to $45,000 on center line and edge line striping around the village, uh, which doesn't leave us a lot for signs and signals and all the other things that come out of there. Uh, so this year, we did add a new um, traffic signal maintenance and repair line item. Uh, and funded that with $25,000, which is an average of, I don't know, about eight or 10 years worth of maintenance that we do. Um, and so we're hoping that eases up on the uh, sign and marking budget um, so that we can continue to do all that work and serve the needs of the village in that way. Um, other than that, a lot of, a lot of things, uh, let's see here, we've got uh, equipment maintenance and repair. Uh, 4,500. Uh, again, if you look back historically, those those have gone over uh, significantly the last couple of years. So we're just trying to get that closer in line. Uh, things like uh, salt and fuel and all those things, uh, garbage pickup, so on and so forth. Those are all just items that are uh, math equations, increased costs, and so on and so forth. Um, again, one of the other things too that I guess I'd point out. And I hate to be jumping around on you, but 4,200 GIS, uh, we also pay a portion of that maintenance contract, and like Larry alluded to, and I think you'll hear Tim and Paul talk about, um, we're trying to catch up on some things, and there are def definitely costs with the GIS coming up. Um, let's see. I 
the non-borrowed capital. Um, we're, we're carrying over potentially some money here for retaining law on Mequon and Squire. Um, we've got uh, some vehicles, some chassis that we're inheriting from um, the fire department. And we're looking to put a new dump body and toolbox on for one of those this year for $18,000. And then we're looking for a new tilt tandem axle trailer. And then on the capital side, um, we're looking for uh, a second track excavator with a thumb, buckets, and concrete breaker. Um, we have one mini excavator right now, and it's sh shared with the uh, sewer utility. Uh, seems to be a, a vehicle that's always in high demand. We also have a vehicle, uh, an old backhoe with a concrete breaker on it that is, again, nickeling and dining us as a village. And so we're looking to buy a second piece of equipment there uh, to use out in the field and keep getting projects done. Uh, patrol truck, you got a single axle Western Star with the plowing and salter. That's pretty standard. You guys should be used to seeing that almost every year. Uh, shouldn't be many surprises there. And then we did order last year a tandem axle vehicle, which will have the uh, V-Box salt brine insert. So this will be a new vehicle that will carry both salt and brine. Uh, we'll use that to salt Mequon Road during an operation, and we'll use it to uh, pre-treat roadways prior to an operation. Again, that's replacing something that we made in the shop a number of years ago and repurposed um, but salt brine application is becoming more the standard in the in the industry, and so we're trying to stay on top of that as well. Uh, and then finally, I think Jay talked about this before he left. Uh, we have uh, $400,000 for uh, street light improvements along Mequon Road. Um, I, I think the committee heard about it, but I'll just summarize it. The Energies is looking to get out of the business of doing our lighting on on. Uh, I shouldn't say that. They can no longer get parts to maintain the lighting along Mequon Road. Uh, they've given us the option of buying new lighting from them and having that installed. Um, and then we as a village have explored the option of us um, having those lights taken down and then having our own lighting installed. Again, all those things will come to committee when the time comes and we can talk about the different options. This is just a placeholder to make sure that that work can get done in 2021. Um, because we've already got lights that are missing fixtures and hanging and looking rough, so. Thank you. Uh, President Walter, would you like to take over or would you like to me to continue? You can finish this, uh, this item. <coughs> this section. When we get into okay. uh, the next. All right. Uh, board, any comments, questions on the highway department? I have one question. Mrs. Abel. Uh, I think Steve is the one who's going to probably have to answer it. That's on the solid waste contract. Are we that confident that the price is not going to drop that much? Because there's only, a, if I'm reading it right, there's only a $3,000 bump in contract, and our contract runs out with waste management this year, well, actually in October, and then we extended it to January 1st. You got a line number? Line item number that we can look um, at. Here. It's uh, 10 7950. Okay. That does reflect the uh, price that they quoted to us. Uh, and uh, we, we did ask for some other uh, features as well as some adjustments to the how eaters related to that contract. So I, I think we're going to be pretty confident if the number's in in 2021, and uh, we plan to bring this through the Public Works Committee in the next cycle. Okay, I said it, I wasn't sure whether it was going to go up for the next, are we again looking at a five-year contract once this one ends in January? I thought it was a three. I, I think, um, I think it was three. It, it, the, the waste initial proposal was a five-year contract. I think one of the decisions we'll take a look at is we could probably get a, a lower uh, annual adjustment if we go to a seven-year contract. So they would be willing, I think, to, to lower their prices somewhat for a little bit longer contract. And that would be, you know, again, one of the things that, that we could look at. But it would not affect 2021. It would only affect the out years. 
Steve, does this reflect the last round of deletions that we're not going to pick up these people's trash? That's recycling. That's recycling? Well, is that in solid waste or not? That's recycling. Oh, it's a recycling contract. That's later on. In later on. Agenda. Okay. All right. Uh, but both, uh, both budget numbers do reflect the additional uh, changes that, that the board asked for at the last time we talked about it. Okay. Any other questions? No further questions. All right. President Walter, I'll turn it over to you to take over item D, parks. Okay. Item on, uh, uh, the agenda is item D, parks. Yes. Mr. Anderson, you have this one as well. Still me. Um, okay, well, um, again, parks budget is probably one of the small ones I do here. Um, you'll see uh, minor change in gas and oil, um, buildings and grounds maintenance and repair uh, probably has the most significant increase. Um, again, just trying to get that in line. We've been close to you and over the last couple of years. Uh, we use that a lot for broadleaf service. Um, and uh, park maintenance that way as well as the shelters. So just trying to bring that up into an area where we're not going over budget. Um, again, on the, on the non borrowed capital, we're trying to carry over some zero turns that we didn't purchase in 2020 uh, and look potentially at uh, painting the splash pad deck at Kinderberg. Um, and... Uh, I guess street tree maintenance is another one. I'm sorry, jumping back to uh, 5290. Um, again, that's a, doesn't look like a significant increase from, from last year, but there was monies carried over. Uh, again, this year especially, uh, we're running against Emerald Ash Borer um, right by July, and we were looking to take trees down and worried about how we were gonna cover the cost of them and so on and so forth. And, I don't know that that will always stay elevated there, but at least getting us through ML dashboard, I think it's important that we have the funding there for that. Um, and then let me just look at uh, capital. Uh, in the in the borrowed capital side, um, we have uh, the potential for sealing and striping of Friedenfeld Park. Again, that's you know asphalt maintenance to. Um, prolong the uh, pavement out there, and then uh, replacing one of the uh, one of the vehicles, truck number four hundred six, uh, which will be leaving the fleet, and we'll be replacing that. Again, that'll be a frontline buildings uh, plow vehicle. Questions? That's a pickup truck type of vehicle. I'm sorry. What? That's a pickup truck type of vehicle. Yes. Okay. Trustee Miller. Yeah, item, um, let me see here. Do, do, line item 4100, it went from, for contracted services, went from almost 50,000 down to 10,000. Yes. That's quite a big drop. Uh, what's what's the um, reason for the drop? I mean, it's fine, but. <laughs> again, Kim, back me up if, if you need, but I think I can explain it. Um, there was money that was set aside in that line item to pay for the contracted service of cleaning in the parks. Uh, that, that money was also reflected in the building's budget under contracted services. Um, so that left the pool of money sitting there. Um, and then I think that was just this, this year was part of balancing the budget was removing some of that, correct? I think the thought at one time was to use, uh, take that cleaning budget and, and split it between uh, parks and then putting it in the building and grounds and I think it when we did the budget it was in there twice so we're just saying just take it out of and for history tracking keep it in the one account so it's in building and grounds we're just taking it out of the park side of it so it's really not monies that's going to be different or it's just going to be in one account rather than splitting it between the two because it when you're account coding it the account coding wasn't following the thought process of trying to capture that. So we just kept it in the building and grounds budget. So it's just a transfer of funds from one to the other. The bottom line is the same. Okay. One other question is, 
why isn't the Bass Bell Museum and the, um, uh, not the pavilion, what's the other one there? Wolf. The Wolf, Wolf House. House. Why isn't that in the park budget and why is it in the building budget instead? I would think that that's part of the parks. Yeah, um, and, I, and I think that's something here over the next few years that we can maybe clean up uh, with several of our line items. Again, we're going to have that new uh, pavilion potentially in Fireman's Park. Um, and, and I do think you're right. I think kind of looking at the line items and saying, hey, these are buildings, these are park buildings, maybe getting those onto the park side would be the right answer. Um, wasn't something I was ready to tackle right away this year, being it's only been about a month. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yep. But I, I do agree. I think it's probably a good idea. Unless, Kim, did you have any insight in the history there? No, it just said it's building and grounds, and the building and grounds captures all the buildings. There being buildings, it just stayed in the one spot, but it could easily be. Um, you know, he, downside to moving it to a different department is is the history i mean you can't look at it then and see what it's been doing and it's two places to look so you lose a little bit of that but after a few years that's right. all you need the history would be there too trustee table uh, i noticed when mark did his thing he had fifteen thousand dollars in for a consultant for friedenfeld i see you got fifteen thousand dollars in to paint to paint the splash pad uh, do we need both if we're going to hire a consultant to see if we're going to change it or modify it? Do we also have to have the money in there to paint the, paint the pad if we're going to make changes to it? Um, I don't want to speak for Mark, but him and I have talked about it, and I think one of the things that he's starting to look at is the replacement of everything at Kinderberg, right. the splash pad, the playground, and just the entire area in general. Um, last year we had um, some flaking and paint chips that were coming off of the deck. Uh, we did get some complaints that came into the village hall here at the rec department. Uh, the kids were stepping on them and paint chips were sharp and that kind of thing. Um, they were ending up in the, in the uh, pool below ground and consequently in the filter. Um, so I guess that the idea behind this, and again, we'll take it to committee and so on and so forth when the time comes to, to actually execute it, but I think the idea behind it is that even if we're two or three or maybe four years out on renovating Kinderberg Park, there's a little bit of a safety issue, there's a little bit of a maintenance issue, and, and that's kind of what the money was there for. Okay, the finances find out that that's a carryover. The yes, that's a carryover from 2020. It's just something we didn't do. Oh, it's right here, but oh, both of these are uh, the lawnmower is also a carryover? Yeah, the increase, the $4,500, is just reflecting the uh, cost of living that might be your cost of living. The, the inflationary increases that may be in 2021. But both those projects are already paid for and budgeted in 2020. They just went down. Okay. Very good. Further questions? Uh, hold on. Well, Trustee Baum. So what's, what's the 4500 for? The ten percent increase. That's the increase that could potentially be there this for next year. How many total zero turn motors do we have? I mean, if we had a fleet of them, what, what's the number in the fleet? Um, I think we have eight right now in the garage, and again, when we get some, others leave. Um, so this is just maintaining our fleet, and obviously something would would fall off. And we see. Did we purchase some last year too? Uh, these are the carryover from last year. We talked about, about the, them during last year's budget. Are we purchasing them every year? No. Okay. They never got purchased this year. Right. This is the carryover. So yeah, we did talk about it a year ago though. What's their lifespan normally? I mean, how many um, years do you expect out of them? I think we're getting like six or eight years out of them. Okay. I have a question. Trustee Kaminsky. Uh, tree, the street tree maintenance, is all the tree maintenance under that, whether it's in a park or whether it's a street tree? It is, yes. So it's all our emerald ash borer thing. Because yeah. it's actually, um, so you're asking for less money than the current year? Because I would think that that problem is going to be even bigger. Now you have to cut down all the trees and 
chip them up and take them away. Is that going to be enough, I guess, is my question. Then yeah, and I, and I kind of tried to hit on that. I mean, if you look at the previous years, 18 and 19, we were 40, um, and some money got carried over. And again, Kim, please jump in if you feel I'm getting this wrong. But some money was carried over uh, for, a, for a large uh, removal project that we contracted out this last year, which made our total 98000 um, Trying to remember. That you actually but, spent, correct? But, but 98000 We're total, darn close. I mean, yeah, by that's the what end I'm of the saying. Year, I think be. the 90 is actually low. The total budgetary number for 2020 was 70000 right. The reason it shows 96 is a carryover okay. from 19. Right. So he's going from 70000 to 90000 So he is <laughs> adding $20,000 to that budget. Thank you. That sounded way better than the way I did 98. it. 98. Correct. I don't care if it's a carryover. We needed the money. Well, the to carryover, the issue. right? So I'm still saying I think the ninety thousand is low. When you look, if you look around the village, you see all the dead trees. You know, somebody's got to start taking care of that. It's really being look bad. But oh. that's just I. I think that it's it's a bit low. That's all. Just a comment. Further questions? We should be getting near the end of the dead trees within our right of ways. I mean, the ones that are on private property are not ours. Yeah, but remember what we did at Public Works about the right of ways? Right. X number of feet from the center line, right? Yep. Was it 15 feet or something? I can't it, remember. It varies, but. Yeah. Uh, you go into Schoen Lope and it looks like that's where the ash trees go to die because the whole park seems <laughs> well, they yep. barren. They took out a lot of trees there a couple of years ago. They took them out. They, they opened up the, by the road and they took a significant amount. But if you take an overview of that park as you drive by, there's more, there's more dead trees than there's live ones, I think. Yeah. Just, just the way it looks. To, to, your, to your point, um, to Art's point, we are getting close uh, to wrapping up what I would call the tree removals in the parks and the village streets in the areas where they've been um, where they're on GIS, where we have John Gall coming in and, and maintaining those and marking them and we're treating them. We're getting close to the removals in that area, but the outskirts of the village, we've yet to really get into. Um, and, and so I, I do think that that money is going to be well used. Um, Shane Moffin, uh, yeah, we widen the paths out there um, and got a lot of dead trees along the paths. We opened the front up a little bit, but yes, there's there's a lot of woods there that still have a lot of dead ash in them as well. Mm. Further questions? Nothing else for parks? Then we go to recycling. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Mm. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I think the most significant change in the recycling budget is the reduction in curbside collection due to the realignment of what we're picking and not picking. So Director Matajczyk gave me a number of 2,000 units coming off. And then we have a slight increase in the contract value for 2021. And so that's, yeah, that should be, <coughs> that should be um, very close to what we're going to be for next year. And then I did increase the recycling material expense to accommodate another eight hours of tub grinding due to ash removal around the village because those trees are now coming to the recycling center. Um, where we used to have an outside private company take that material. Um, they're getting it from the city of Brookfield for free ground once already, so that is no longer an option to us. Drain oil is now a pay item. We, it used to be a source of revenue for us. Um, however, the price of petroleum has dropped significantly that they're no longer firing asphalt plants on drain oil. So we have to pay $75 every time our tank is emptied at the recycling center. So there is a slight increase. Um, I take that back. There's no increase in my general supplies and expenses. We're hoping to mitigate those costs in other ways to keep that line item stable. Questions? 
Questions? I just have a comment. Trustee Wing. Um, so the recycling saved us a lot of money taking off those units. I wanted to do it 10 years ago <laughs> and the board was afraid to do it. I guess I'm not saying I told you so, but I guess I am saying I told you so. I had one call. I don't know how many of you received any calls. I received three. Three. And we thought we were going to have a boardroom full. If we would have, if, if, if I could have just got a majority of you to listen to me 10 years ago, we could have saved <laughs> hundreds of hundreds of thousands of dollars. That's all I have to say. Further questions? Nothing further for recycling. Then we can go to water utility. Thank you. <laughs> uh, good evening. So before you, the water utility budget, we again followed historical trends to fill in some of the numbers for the expenditure and capital uh, items that we're working through. Um, just a couple highlighted items to bring your attention under the uh, expenditure side of things for the utility under pumping expense maintenance. Um, we're trying to do some uh, infusion of maintenance in some of the floors to our well houses uh, by using epoxy coating um, surfaces. We did a pilot test uh, this year at one of our wells and it turned out really nice. So instead of just using a household or industrial kind of um, paint. We're actually trying to um, extend the service life of our floors a little bit just from the chlorine and fluoride eating out the, the concrete really bad. Uh, on water treatment expense, um, this is kind of noteworthy. I, I did a, a spreadsheet on cost evaluation of uh, our chlorine analyzers and we're looking at about a $11,000 per year for all six analyzers. Once uh, I, I was able to find a new unit and the cost reduction is, we're probably gonna be 30 to $40 per year per each unit. So it's gonna be a considerable savings to the utility once we can get these older units out and replaced with a new, um, less maintenance driven chlorine and fluoride analyzer. Under transmission and distribution, um, as uh, Scott Anderson mentioned, uh, we're finding some deficiencies in the GIS um, in our management program for tracking our infrastructure valves, hydrants, um, location of our mains. So as we find those in the field during construction, during our locating processes, we're trying to upgrade our uh, management system and um, try to get a more accurate system for us to manage. Um, all our underground uh, facilities. Uh, let's see, under, uh, under the maintenance on transmission and distribution, uh, bumped up some of the accounts, um, water main break repairs, that we bumped up a few dollars, and uh, maintenance of hydrants, same thing, we're just seeing the degradation as the utility ages. We might try to get some hydrants painted next year, but the, again, these are all placeholders uh, for the utility and we just work through the budget as time and funds are available. Uh, on the capital side, uh, a couple of noteworthy things we're trying to accomplish. Um, one specifically is we, we did get hit um, on the meter install program this year due to COVID-19. Um, we are looking at an accelerated approach, possibly with some contract services, uh, just to clean up the slate and what's deficient with our meter install program. Uh, also, uh, we are trying to look at installing uh, AC units at uh, several, um, two or three of our well houses. Right now, the only cooling is, a, is large industrial fans. So these um, well houses need to be for efficiency and longevity of the equipment, it's kind of crucial to have a, a cooler environment for these uh, pieces of equipment to run in. Um, 
also another real significant capital project we're going to try pushing through for 2021 is a project called the PLC replacement. There's uh, four, five wells that um, these PLCs, it's a programmable logic controller. It's kind of the brain box of our wells, which takes the mechanical signal, converts it to an electrical uh, signal, and it makes all the wells turn off, towers and SCADA and control alarms, what have you. So these PLCs have come to the end of their service life. And we just want to get these replaced out before we have significant problems and trying to control and monitor our wells. Any questions? Or any questions? Trustee Sable. I, my just my question would be a finance. Uh, notice that everything's here is based on quarters one and quarters two. What did quarters three look like in the water utility? Has it improved or has it got worse or what? The revenue projections, the revenues that we received for the quarter one and quarter two, quarter two ending in, in um, June, it was lower than anticipated, obviously, in the commercial side and the industrial side due to the shutdowns of the, a lot of the companies and the COVID. We did see an uptick in uh, in usage of water in the third quarter. So when that did come through, the biggest one was our industrial revenues. It was uh, up by about um, $50,000 actually. So that was good. This used our, our large user was using Germantown's water higher than it had in the past, the first two quarters. Residential is, is pretty much close to budget of what we're looking at. Commercial was, uh, I think is maybe down will be down from budget uh, still. They're not, hasn't quite caught up as where they could be or we anticipated them to be. Another thing to note in those revenues that we're projecting for 2021 is kind of mirroring 2020. We're not really projecting anything for that increase that we are working towards. As you know, we've got a rate increase into the PSC so that we don't know what those rates are going to be, but they're going to be something and that is not currently in these numbers. So those numbers would be a, a bit better. So as far as the revenues for 2020 we've received, we're planning to, it looks like we will certainly be on budget due to those commercial, that industrial going higher. The dollars also that we have uh, projected to use for a lot of the projects that Paul has put forward, uh, there is monies to do that. I think we had some monies aside that we earmarked for a tower painting, and if those don't go currently right now to get that tower painted this year and next year, we can always work towards that when the rate increase goes through. Was that about 500000 The tower painting is... For the painting. Yeah, I think the 750. Other questions? Trustee Baum. Um, line item 6720, supplies, maintenance, and distribution reservoir. $750,000. It's a 4 million percent increase. What's that all about? That's the uh, reserve account for the tower. But Kim can probably answer. We had, we had thought we would be able to do the tower painting in 2020, and that is put off. So the 2020 number for that 750000 did not and is not going to be used. So we're just using that going forward then, anticipating maybe doing the tower painting in 2021, but that's still also just a placeover and a thought. I don't think we're going to, we'll have to have more discussion going further into the year of what that's actually going to take place. Okay. And being that as an expense item, it's not something that's in the capital budget, even though it looks like it's so large, but the PSC requires that to be a maintenance uh, a maintenance expense. And we do put money aside every year for it, right? Currently, we do have that earmarked cash account where we put together, I think we had $89,000 per year as a savings, and we build up that money. So there is money currently available for that tower painting to do that. It's just that there's other more pressing needs, as Paula decided, as far as actual controlling and, and maintaining the wells that we have running. That may be a better use of those funds right now. Further questions? Nothing else for water? Then we go to sewer utility. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. 
Mm -hmm. On the maintenance side of the budget, um, lift station materials is going down due to um, getting some budgeted repairs done to the plumbing at Main Street and Old Farm Lift, which cost about $20,000, so that line item was, was reduced accordingly. Um, general plant materials, our batteries for our two-way radios are at end of service life, and you might think $1,000 is a lot of money, um, but we're required to have intrinsically safe radios in the wastewater utility, so they're explosion proof, and that's why they're so expensive. Um, really, the, the budget is flat like it usually is. Um, capital side, you have two telescopic wet well isolation valves that are at the end of service life. We're estimating those um, to be about $22,000 to replace them. Those are one at each of the lift stations at Main Street and Old Farm. Uh, the carryover is $500,000 for the Renwood lift station. A lot of these monies in my capital are carryovers from 20 over to 21 due to the project still ongoing. Um, collecting means and accessories, that's 600,000 is a carryover also. We had a contract in place to do some interceptor lining last year. The contractor defaulted on that contract. Therefore, um, 2.378 million was budgeted last year for that. We want to do the entire project and get it done this year so we're increasing that line item by 1.122 million dollars so we can complete that project in its totality flow metering and monitoring equipment um, when lift one comes offline which should be march of 21 we want to salvage the um, station controller and transducer transducer out of that station and put that at lift station number three which is located over by menards and walmart and that $15,000 there is for integration and to update record drawings. Um, currently use tablets out in the field for data acquisition. Um, those are coming to the end of their service life also. They're, we've had those now for about nine years. And we're looking to go with Chromebooks. Um, it just seems that the Chromebook gives you more versatility when you're pinching and zooming. Um, it keeps resolutions more accurate. Excuse me? How many units is that? $1,200 is how many computers? That'll get us five Chromebooks, one right. for each truck. Uh, we're looking at putting a snowplow on truck 550. That's a 2017 that'll be passed down um, to the field. And then transportation equipment, we're looking to replace uh, truck 551, which is a 2004 GMC with about 175,000 equivalent miles on it as 5,800 hours. And we're looking to replace our confined space equipment van. Um, that one has close to 200,000 miles on it and is in dire need of front end suspension work. Um, it's not worth putting the money into it. And then the 30,000 for the eventual replacement of the jet vac. Any questions? Trustee Myers. Uh, in regard to the, uh, the intersector lighting, where is that area? This um, it's basically from spot and court down around the curve on County Line Road and then everything fronting the landfill and through the landfill property. Thank you. Other questions? Trustee Zabel. Have we got a final number from MMSD for the capital charge yet? Usually they send it about this time. No, I do not. Anything else for sewer utility? Nothing else? Then we'll go to community development building inspection. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen.
Good evening. Evening. Well, under the uh, circumstances, 2020 has been reasonably good uh, in terms of revenue for inspection services. Uh, through September, construction activity has generated approximately $387,000, which is about $94,000 uh, of the entire year's uh, revenue um, budget of 482, about 80% of what we projected we would take in. Uh, we are, or were at the time the budget was prepared here, um, looking at the year end for 2020 being slightly less uh, than the 482 that we had projected for the whole year uh, because of uh, reductions in development activity. Uh, however, with um, some recent news that we are likely, very likely, to get another 130,000 square foot industrial building uh, submitting permits uh, before the end of the year. Uh, I'm hopeful that we will uh, come out of the end of the year with about $435,000 of revenue, uh, only 48,000 short of our originally projected budget for 2020. So that's about 90%. Uh, of what we have projected. So I think that's, I personally think that's that's good. Um, positive on the side of expenses, uh, principally due to reductions in salary and fringe benefits because of our changeover from in-house to contracted permit management and inspection services. Uh, however, I should point out that the reductions in salary will be offset uh, somewhat due to increases in the contractor cost uh, to complete inspections for permits that were issued in revenue taken in before September 1st, before SafeBuilt started uh, their service, uh, and also because of the 62, 38% cost share uh, allocation in the fourth quarter of 2020 uh, under the SafeBuilt contract. For 2021, uh, projecting a high amount of uh, commercial and industrial development um, higher than we did in 2020, slightly higher, and, and a higher amount of residential development uh, resulting in both higher uh, revenue projections, a uh, total of 592000 for 2021. Uh, I, I should point out that we do have a new uh, revenue category, uh, commercial plan review fees uh, for 2021 uh, in the chosen amount of $85,000. Uh, if you recall, under this, with the SafeBook contract, they do uh, and will provide commercial plan review services as an alternative to uh, developers having to go to uh, Wisconsin DSPS. Um, and we, uh, there's a 90-10 uh, cost share for plan review services. So that, that number adds to the revenue. That's why it looks so much higher than 2020 and kind of skews any sort of apples to apples comparison of revenue 2021 to 2020. Uh, on the commercial side for 2021, uh, compared to uh, last year, this, the current year, we're being uh, more optimistic with revenue projections. Um, starting last year, uh, we started breaking out of what I would consider to be a cautiously optimistic mindset um, with respect to new construction and industrial development. Uh, for this year, we're looking at um, between 528, I'm sorry, between 560 and 710,000 square feet of new construction, uh, commercial and industrial, uh, slightly more than in 2020. Uh, on the residential side, in 2021, we're projecting uh, 35 new single family uh, permits and 20 to 30 multifamily condominium permits. Uh, given the uh, continued popularity and demand for uh, our new residential subdivisions, including Prairie Glen 2, Harvest Hills, uh, Renwood Phase 1, both the single family and condo areas. Um, Kinderberg Park property will be coming online by the end of this year, uh, Kinderberg Estates, uh, and the Woodland Ponds Estate subdivision that came on at the beginning of this year. Uh, I would point out that um, so far for 2020, uh, we've issued 31 single family building permits uh, with another three single family permits uh, in processing and we've issued one two family permit uh, for a condominium building in Renwood uh, and we have one four family uh, permit application in process. Uh, I mentioned the commercial plan review fees. Uh, overall, with these projections, the revenue projection for 2021, uh, I would consider to be very optimistic. 
Uh, for 2021 on the expense side, uh, clearly the uh, most significant change uh, is our decision to replace the in-house inspection services with safe built and that shows up under the contracted services amount in the expenses area. Uh, we show a total of $384,000 uh, principally all for safe built services of, as part of the, uh, the contract for permit management and inspection services. Uh, we did receive our first invoice for September activity uh, earlier this week. Um, I haven't had a chance to, to go through that just yet, uh, but overall uh, in the month of September, they did process 222 permits uh, for a gross total permit fee revenue of $63,670 and an additional uh, $3,850 in com commercial plan review fees. I should point out that uh, with the change in the safe built service and our uh, contract with the 62-38% split on permit fee revenue, uh, if the uh, development uh, projections and in turn our permit revenue is less in 2021 than we are projecting, uh, the expenses for the safe built services will fall proportionally uh, because of, again, our contractual arrangement. That's all I've got for inspection services. If there are any questions. Trustee Baum. Can, can you give me those numbers again? How many permits did Safe Build push through, approve? A total of 222. 222 building permits were approved by Safe Build. Well, 222 total permits. Um, if you want to break it down into building construction, we got 75. Uh, 75 electrical, uh, 36 um, HVAC, and 37 plumbing. There were uh, probably less than a half dozen erosion control permits as well. And that's where I get the approximate 220 uh, total. So I guess I, when they came through for this, I didn't understand that they were reviewing permits. I thought they were just reviewing plans. So on a residential project, somebody wants to upgrade an electrical system in their house, they need to pull a permit. The cost of that permit is how much and how much are we getting and how much is Safe Build getting? Well, the cost share is 62% for Safe Build, 38% for the village. The actual cost of that particular permit is going to vary. Yeah. Uh, there's a minimum permit fee of $50 if somebody's replacing a uh, you know, handful of receptacles on um, doing some minor rewiring. Uh, it could be between $50 and $100 permit fee. Okay. All right, thank you. Other questions for building inspection? Trustee Myers. Uh, Jeff, in your early part, you mentioned uh, a, a additional building being built. Where is that going to be? In what area? Um, we've uh, we've heard that the uh, what we I refer to as the. Uh, uh, Dickman 3 building. Oh, okay. uh, it was approved, uh, received site plan approval earlier in the year, um, and uh, we just received word this week that uh, they, they want to submit uh, plans to build out uh, that 130,000 square foot building for one, uh, one tenant. So then that would be north of Rockfield Road uh, along Goldendale? It, it, it's south of Rockfield, uh, west oh. of Goldendale, yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. Other questions? No other questions? Then we can go to community development planning zoning. For planning and zoning, uh, <clears throat> 2020 hasn't been the, the best year for revenue. Um, so far, we've uh, generated approximately 65,000, uh, 35,000 under the entire year's budget of 100,000, so about 66, 65%. Um, for year end, we're projecting we're projecting uh, about seventy thousand. Um, now, with some additional activity that's that's come in in the last few weeks and through the end of the year, we're probably looking at between eighty and eighty-five thousand uh, dollars of revenue for twenty twenty. So about eighty to eighty-five percent of uh, of the uh, budget for twenty twenty. Now, not not too bad, but does reflect a reduction in in activity. Um, as far as expenses for 2020, um, we're, we're on track slightly less. Uh, the most notable item being the contracted services budget of 75,000 uh, for the 2050 comprehensive plan project. Um, 
that project has been uh, on hiatus uh, with respect to the consultant um, since late March, and we are scheduled to restart uh, this month uh, at our planning commission meeting on Monday, October 12th. Um, we're going to jump back in and discuss um, an updated schedule and bring the members up to date with, with respect to some of the activities, including going over the uh, community survey results uh, briefly and our neighborhood uh, district and corridor mapping activities. So we're going to kind of refresh everybody on, on next Monday, uh, but not necessarily jump uh, a full bore into uh, um, revising or, or developing anything at this point. We'll probably be doing that uh, at a special meeting later in October. At this point, the consultant is proposing uh, what amounts to as a project completion in March of 2021 with a series of uh, community um, workshops and, and meetings uh, in between, uh, consistent with our, our original contract. Uh, however, the, the form that those meetings will take is is somewhat uh, up in the air at this point. Um, we're working on a number of activities. Um, we're going to be setting up a, a new or modified uh, website um, that will enable us to conduct uh, virtual meetings on a, a, a better, what I would consider a better platform than the, through the WebEx or, the, or a Zoom meeting uh, because it's focused on community type projects like a planning project. Um, and we're working with a consultant on setting that up uh, as we speak. For 2021, uh, we expect a reduction in development activity on the planning side uh, slightly uh, with revenue projections um, about 75% uh, of the 2020 budget, a projection of about $76,000 in revenue. Um, and of course, um, we're hopeful that we do get some of our uh, industrial areas, uh, some plans in, um, site plan approvals in 2021 early on so we can um, uh, realize the, uh, the revenue on the building inspection side uh, later in the summer and in fall. Uh, with that, I, I don't have anything else. Any other questions? Trustee Bong? Uh, we've, we've talked about, and on Monday we talked about this new potential development south of Holy Hill Road. Is that anticipated in your numbers for coming through this year, or is that something that's just, you don't think about it? No, in fact, um, so I've sort of worked in call it an unknown project uh, for 2021 in terms of site plan approval. Uh, and one of those could very well be a building uh, on that, uh, that property south of Holy Hill, west of Goldendale that we're talking about uh, on Monday. Um, similarly, in the inspection uh, permit fee side, we've, we've plugged in, as we have in the past, uh, two, uh, call them unknown buildings that uh, at this point we don't have uh, hard and fast site plan approval for, uh, but it seems every year uh, for, quite frankly, as long as I've been here, um, we always seem to realize one or two large building projects that we didn't see coming that come through and uh, have always boosted our revenue on the inspection uh, permit fee side, uh, probably five out of the last six years um, in a substantial amount. So. Again, uh, as I mentioned when I was talking about inspection services, the expectation is optimistic uh, for uh, building activity in 2021. Okay. Other questions? No other questions for community development planning and zoning? Okay, then we can go to uh, TIF districts. Thank you, Jeff. We currently have three TIF districts that are open, TIF 6, 7, and 8. TIF 6 and 7, uh, TIF 6 being on Appleton Avenue, 7 being a speaker project over on Goldendale, 
are essentially done as far as construction is concerned. So the only thing we're looking at is a little bit of administration for that and the, their debt service. Uh, the money's coming through for increment in TID 6 uh, is projected. I don't have the actual ratio and the actual um, dollars or the TIF worksheets prepared yet to get the dollar amount that are exact, but it does seem to be looking at the assessed values that it will certainly cover, TIF 6 will certainly cover its debt. As you recall, TIF 6 was a bit of a struggle. We do have a few outstanding obligations with that revenue coming through. We've got some borrowed, or not borrowed, money, some monies that we had uh, taken from MLG as a uh, their construction, they set aside some escrowed funds that we had to use, and we do have uh, about 100,000, or I think it's 60, but so we have some monies that Germantown actually, the general fund had borrowed to the TIF. So currently, it looks as if those will be covered with the life of this loan. TID 7, as I mentioned, is also one that is constructually complete, except for some administration that we're showing, as well as just the debt. That one is a little bit slower as far as the increment is coming through. And I know Steve has been talking with the speaker, and they've got plans to mitigate some of those costs so that that debt should be also something they're working through to get covered for 2021. TID 8 uh, is over there on uh, Rockfield Road and Goldendale Road, doing great. <laughs> it's got a lot of increment coming in, uh, quicker and faster than we had thought, as, as well as the project went quicker and faster as we thought. There is substantial construction still being used over there regarding the utilities, the water tower in the area, the well that will be going there, the booster station coming through. We did borrow monies uh, for the their TID 8 portion of those water projects. We do have funds left. They're still for that construction. A lot of that's ongoing. I, there might be some other plans for that park also. I know Steve's quite involved with that, and I know you had discussions on Monday night. So it is an ongoing project. It's a dynamic project. The increment is covering its debt. The loan is still funds available to cover the construction project. So it's, it's doing um, busy. It's very busy. <laughs> Okay, questions? Trustee Baum. Okay, Kim, I'm, I'm looking on the uh, 2021 budget line item worksheet expenditures under the 2021 budget column. For which part, which David? Tip, uh, tip 8. Okay. Which is page 2, tip 8. At the bottom of the page it says tip number 8, line 21, and the lower line is page 2. Okay. Uh, question being the sum total of department total does not equal the line items above. What am I missing? So you're looking at department total? Uh, I'm looking at, yeah, department total. Am I supposed to add something from the previous page to that? Yeah, because it's 713 equals the, the 5 and 2. So what's what makes up the 3 or 3 million 3? So for total expenses, what line are you on? Try to understand how we get to department total. I have the, is that formula just wrong? Can we... No, it's, it's, it's adding another page is what I understand. Yeah, no, it's adding page two and three together. So you got the 700, you got the 630, the 500, and the million right. of page two that gets the final total on page three. Well, page three is where you got the three million three hundred, at least in my book. Yeah. Page two, you have the other expenses that are going for improvements, uh, water main improvements, sewer improvements. So I've got what you're calling page two is page one in mind. Okay. And I've got one point two million for total intergovernmental revenue, miscellaneous revenue of seven thousand. No, you actually you should be going down to street improvements down later, down to 48, 574, 530, 3100. 3100? Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm trying to figure out. 31. I got 3150. I don't have a 31 on revenues. No, I'm not on revenues. I'm on expenditures. Expenditure line, expenditures. expenditure line should be on its own page. So yeah. you've got three tabs, expenditures. You don't think that out totals 3.3 .3 million? 
on my page, I've got a column that says 200,000 plus 513,000 is 713, and then it's some totals, department he's, total he's is 3.3 million dollars. Missing what page missing? two. Can you scroll up? Are you scrolling you gotta, up? You gotta go up from 23,929, 1,840,000, 630,000, 713,813. Oh. I'm missing a whole section of this. It, it, you should be able to scroll up. It's just got the, um, Art says you've got to take the combination of the pages. Yeah, just scroll up. Yeah, I don't think it's showing that on his document. I'm, I'm missing a whole bunch. Okay. Yeah. The spreadsheet shows the polls. He's got other numbers that I don't have. So. Okay, it, okay, it is 3.3 .3 million. I'm sorry. I'll take okay. a look at that and, and make sure it's updated. Is it, what is totaling is there is a salary line, um, the salary and benefits of 176,000. Oh, wait, no, it's 123,000. We have a contracted services for street maintenance of a million, water main improvements, 840,000. No. Yeah. Sanitary for 630, and debt service for 713. It's on here. Right. Put those three together and you get three, three. I'm sorry if that didn't come through correctly. When? Further questions on any of the three tips, Trustee Zabel. When does the when does uh, the TIF board meet? When do you have to have the little audits that have to be fired off to the state? Well, the, the TIF um, reports are due to the state July 1st, and those have been filed, and we need to then have a uh, meeting with the joint, with the uh, other jurisdictions yearly. I think last year we probably had that, I think we did have that in early December, so we'll probably be structuring that and setting that up for the same time period. In the TID 7, we've just completed a 30% audit for TID 7 that's due. I, there's requirements for the TIF districts is to have a, when the 30% of the construction is done, and then when the expenditure period is done, then when it's closed. So we will be having the yearly review with the other uh, jurisdictions probably in November, December. And I, the other thing is that uh, my memory of TIF sets is that once it had a certain percentage completed, the state was gonna require us to do a right turn lane at Lannan as part of that roundabout. Are they, is that still going to be a requirement uh, from DOT that we do that? I have to pay for that? I think that's something we may want to check into. I don't think the traffic counts have got anywhere near where they, where they should be to require it. But I know it was one of the requirements that the state added as far as TIF sets. So somebody may want to check that out. Talking to Steve there. I thought they pulled back on. Yeah, so did I. Well, they they changed what they were going to do with the intersection. They wanted us to really blow out that roundabout and really make it big. And at the last minute, my memory was that they only going to require us to do a direct right turn lane from Appleton onto Lannan, northbound going eastbound, instead of having to go into the circle and come out. They wanted a direct right turn lane, but I don't think the traffic would require it. I thought it was when we got to 75% approval, but again, that was a DLT requirement. And again, with the numbers now, I don't know if they'd be requiring it, but I hate to get to a point where we have to uh, take it on as a village charge instead of a TIF cost. So I, I, I don't know if we want to go to the state and ask them about it. They may require it or, or just forget about it. <laughs> we just get that one closed quick. <laughs> Don't remind anybody. Other questions? I, it, it should be probably uh, investigated. I, I remember when it came about, but I thought it had been dropped based mm -hmm. on uh, some things that, that had happened within the county and, and uh, just when they kind of redid that whole intersection. But it's, it warrants a, a question. Yeah, they, they reduced that intersection quite a bit from what it originally was. But I thought they put one one little requirement on us. They did, but they never. Well, oh, that's what I then. I said to me, the traffic counts over there are not even close to what was anticipated. Anything else for any of the tips? Any other questions? No other questions. 
Anything else to be revisited on anything above? Any other? Well, the only thing I want to point out is that uh, as of last night's board meeting, we reduced the fire department account by, I think, just under 6000 by by putting that clerk employee from an, uh, only to a level 7 instead of a level 10. So I think we have a $6,000 reduction in the budget so far. I don't know if staff has corrected that or not. Okay. Good point. Anything else? If there's nothing else, then our next meeting is scheduled for Thursday, October 15th at 6 p.m. With that, then, we can stand adjourned. Thank you all. And thank you, staff. Stand up. I'm going to grab your chair. Don't worry. Thank you for dinner again, Dan. I won't pull it off. Did you eat all the candy? <laughs> Good night, Dan. Good night, Steve. Good night. Rise and shine. Wonderful.